All right, let's talk some options trading. Mr. Kevin Green back with us, taking a look at the rest of this week and where the big levels are to watch with the holiday in the middle of this week. KG, how does that affect what you're watching? Well, we're probably seeing a little bit of lower volume than average because of the holiday that we have this week, but we do have an options expiration happening this Friday, Oliver. So we should see a little bit of fireworks when it comes to not only just the rebalancing from institutional traders, but also uh, what speculators are going to be looking forward to going into next week. Now, let's actually look at the open interest chart first. I think that gives us a good uh, indication as to what our guard rails, as you kind of call them, what they could be for this week. And I think the biggest one, obviously, is going to be the 55. 500 level. And this one's going to be a very key one to be able to break, Oliver, because if you actually look at the distribution uh, on the, the curve, to say the least, everybody's really pinned here. There's not really a gamma wall to the downside. There's not really a new gamma wall forming to the upside. Maybe you could say 5550, uh, but that's going to be a, a very small wall at this point in time. So what does that mean? We, mean, we may have pin risk this week, meaning that we might just end at the 5,500 level or very close to that 5,500 level to say the least here because of the exposure that is at that particular line. If we do break to the downside, 5,450, once again, that was an old area of resistance. Now that's becoming an area of support. Let's see if we have some buyers stepping in at that particular level. But once again, after that roll up that we saw from the FOMC meeting last week, from CPI, from all of the economic data last week, it seems like everybody's really just targeting for this level, trying to get over the hump here going into July. All right. Uh, so that old uh, resistance now becomes a little bit of new support, uh, uh, negative dealer gamma level. So that kind of works in our favor, too. So it seems like we've kind of got uh, the highway built out pretty well here for the week, unless uh, we're able to get through 5,500. But uh, it seems like we're more kind of finding support when we drop rather than like really ripping. I mean, yesterday was a pretty good day. Uh, to put us up pretty close against that barrier. Uh, all right, so look, the middle of the week doesn't, uh, holiday doesn't change it too, too much. More like the pen, to your point, uh, volume-wise and uh, where the pressure is, looking at options volume, is that similar or how much does that differ? I mean, we're a little bit light. We're running at around, well, let's say 55%, 60% of what we have seen on the, over the five-week average, to say the least. So yes, it's going to be a little bit lower for this week. Also kind of keep in mind, once again, there isn't a really a higher level that's being formed right now that's fairly close. We'll talk about one here in a little bit. We won't go to that chart yet, but there is one that's sitting at 5570. We'll talk about the collar. So if we break through that 5500 level, then there's a massive gap that we could actually have for a move to the upside. Similar to what we saw last week. We knew that we know that 5400 was a, a very key area for us to be able to break through. We smashed through that level and then it was just off to the races until we kind of got to these levels right now. On the volume chart here, this is for today. And what do we see okay. for action for today? Light volume, yes. 54, 5490, an area of resistance. You can kind of see even on Friday, we actually rejected that level pretty much all day. Today, we did for the most part the same thing. And then 5470 is where we had some buyers actually step in. We had a little bit of a swoosh to the downside, some bearish activity to start today's trading session. But bidders came back in, bought that back up. But if you kind of look at this range, it's a very compressed range. And this is where you see low volatility markets, but we're in positive gamma territory, meaning that we're not seeing anything that's out size to the upside or downside and market makers are able to compress volume at this point in time the balance level or that where that area is going to be kind of like neutral for everybody that's involved sitting at 54.79 look at that area for the close today we kind of hovered around that around five minutes ago 10 minutes ago let's see if we kind of gravitate more towards that and if we do try to get to that 54.90 level i would not be surprised if we do kind of fade that again because of that 5500 level call wall that we have setting up Let's lastly talk about the JP Morgan collar. We brought this up on okay. Friday, wasn't able to hit it yesterday, but here's the key reason why I say there's a massive gap within this market. So JP Morgan has a fund, they actually have several funds, but they have the hedge equity fund. And the ticker that we're kind of modeling out is JH. EQX. Anybody can look this up. You can actually go to their website. You can see all the full positions. They own a fair amount of shares uh, on different companies. It's like three pages worth. And then they mm. collar this position, but it's not a traditional collar. A traditional collar is usually when you sell an out of the money call and then you buy an out of the money put to be able to protect downside risk. Okay. For this portfolio, they're actually short the 4185 puts and then they're short the 5570 calls. Mm. Once again, bringing that level up. A world away on the puts. Yes. 
Right. The 4185 puts, let's kind of throw that away. Unless something dramatic happens, we have a black swan event. That is not going to be on the risk <laughs> radar as far as any type of exposure. But the 5570 calls are. And that's where we're going to see a fair amount of churn. That's where we see this call wall that is starting to form. And you're looking at the quarterly expiration, which is going to be next week on the 28th. Got it. That being said, $20, $20 billion worth of notational value sitting at that particular level. There is a significant amount of gamma risk if we continue to move to the upside. Right now, for every one point move in the S&P 500 at these particular levels, it adds around $12,000 worth of risk to that position, or at least the risk for that open interest. Doesn't sound like much, Oliver, but as we get closer and closer, that get, that dollar value goes up more and more. Now, dealers are actually long those calls. This institution, JP Morgan, is short those calls. The higher we go, the more closer in the money that those dealers are going to be. But those yeah. dealers really want to be delta neutral. So they're going to actually sell futures in order to try to stay sell delta neutral, meaning they're going to try to compress volatility. Right. And that's one thing to kind of note. But if we kind of break up the low, uh, above that 5,500 level, that's the gap Madness. that we have going into the end of the month. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. All right. Cool. But that's next week that trade expires, right? Correct. Okay. Correct. So that's going to be kind of your wall there. So you can kind of get close to it as you called it a magnet, if you will. If we have mm -hmm. good economic data and the trade kind of aligns, mm -hmm. that could be a magnet for us. But until we break fifty five hundred, that's kind of when you have that. That's when you have that gap. Exactly. So you have a roof and then you kind of have that magnet level that we can attract to. Yeah. But once again, dealers are long those calls. It's something a little different. They're long those calls. So in order for them to offset risk, they would sell equity futures, the E-mini S&P 500, and that can once again dampen volatility, even though they are going to be, for the yeah. most part, long uh, that particular position. All right, 5570. Uh, still a good ways away. So we until yep. we got to kind of, you know, uh, think about that, but maybe a little magnet there, a little pull and we've got support below us. So it seems like we're in pretty good shape as uh, most of the force is kind of dragging us upward or keeping us stable. Thanks, Kevin Green. Nice look. Good refresher for us. Appreciate that.